this video, I want to demonstrate how to configure and update a custom tube and pipe template so that you can add your own styles and then make the tube and pipe environment inside of Inventor work more specifically to your company and industry needs. So the first thing that you need to do is you have to click on the projects and in order to sometimes configure this if you need to switch project files or something else where you need to edit the project you do need to close out of all documents before you make any changes. So the templates for the tube and pipe environment that master run subassembly are located with your design data. So if you access the projects and I'm just using a standard classroom project and I look at the folder options you need to see where your design data is stored. So this can be one of two places. It could just be using the default path, which is in the application options, or you can specify a very unique set of design data for each project file. And this could be a networked project or network design data in this project file, or it could be something very unique. So to check and see where your design data lives, you could go to the application options, or if you just hover on it, you can see that it's in my C users, public docs, etc. So I'm going to go ahead and navigate to that, bring up a folder explorer. We'll go as quickly as we can. C users, public, public documents, Autodesk, Inventor 2018 and in the design data. So what we're going to have is we're going to have a tube and pipe folder and inside that tube and pipe folder is the piping runs. So what you need to do if you're going to make any edits to your piping runs subassembly, I strongly recommend that you make a backup. To do that you right click on the existing current one, copy it, you can paste it in the same location, and then I usually give it a date so that I know exactly when that file was accessed. So in this case, 2017-11-10. So now we've got a backup, and if we want to, we can double click to open up this piping runs assembly. So we hit done here, whoops, and then it should load that up. And now we're in the pipe runs subassembly. So what we need to do in here is create a new style. So the reason we do it inside the master run subassembly is that way anytime we launch a new assembly that has tube and pipe in it, we'll be able to access the specific styles that we need. This isn't the only way to accomplish this, but it probably is the most efficient and straightforward for um, your everyday project work. So I'm going to click on the tube and pipe styles and we see that these are all of the styles that are available to us. Some of them are stock, meaning they came right out of the box in Inventor, and other ones if we expand the flexible hose we can see that we've got different types. For example, I've been building more PEX runs for doing personal plumbing projects and planning them out. So, so what we can do is we can copy an existing one. So let's say the flexible water line. Let's just copy that. And it looks like this has actually been broken, which is okay, which is okay. So that's not a big deal. I don't really care. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a copy of it. So inside this copy, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do class. Oops, I actually have to hit the pencil icon. That always gets me. There we go. Now we can edit it. I'm going to call this class test 3 eighths. So this is going to be a 3 eighths fitting and a 3 eighths hose that I have published. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to click on the pipe, double click on it, and I'm going to look for my class hose. So I've published this already, but basically any type of component that you have already published as a conduit, meaning a pipe, a formed tube, or in this case a flexible hose, you can come in here and pick that. If you have a specific standard like the name of your company, that can just help filter that list down 
so you can very quickly find the one that you're looking for. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this class hose 3 eighths and hit OK. And now I've been able to populate that. And you can either make a style that has no fittings, so I could suppress that, or you can make a style that has fittings at one end or both ends, and then you double click to find the one that you want. So again, to make my life easier, I want to find the class style or the standard, and then I can find my fitting that I've created. So I'm going to go ahead and apply that to both. to create that style. And so there are additional things that you can do when making a style. You can uh, create different categories if you wish. I'll leave it as just a flexible hose. You can click on your rules and you can set up like a minimum bend radius. Maybe that minimum bend radius is one inch. Uh, round up value. We could also give it a value of one inch to say it always has to be to the nearest inch for the round up. And once you're happy with the individual bend radius rules, roundup values, you've configured the fittings that you wish, go ahead and hit save. And so now we have a new flexible hose style called class test. I'll go ahead and close that, and I'm going to save my master runs subassembly. So let's test it out. If I launch a new assembly, Actually, let's grab, yeah, we'll start a new assembly because we want to bring in the new template. And I'll save this at my workspace level. We'll just call us test. <clears throat> I can bring in a new tube and pipe master run subassembly. Sub -assembly. I'll accept all the default names for now. And then when I go to grab the style, there is my class test, 3 eighths. So by creating that style in the master run subassembly, it's now available for every single assembly that I add tube and pipe data to. So this is an excellent way to configure it and make your unique needs a part of your everyday workflow. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. Otherwise, I hope all is well and have a most blessed day.